Chapter 7 Wonderful Incarnation Sai Baba knew all yogic practices. He was well versed in the six processes including Dauti, that is stomach cleaning by a moistened piece of linen 3 inches in breadth and 22 and a half inches in length. Khanda Yoga, that is separating his limbs and joining them again and Samadhi, etc. If you thought that he was a Hindu, he looked like a Yavan. If you thought him to be a Yavan, he looked like a pious Hindu. No one definitely knew whether he was a Hindu or a Muslim. He celebrated the Hindu festival of Ram Naomi with all due formalities and at the same time permitted the sandal procession of the Muslims. He encouraged wrestling bouts in this festival. When the Gokulashtami came, he got the Gopalkala ceremony duly performed. And on Eid festivals, he allowed the Muslims to say their prayers, that is namaz, in his masjid. Once, during a Muharram festival, some Muslims proposed to construct a tazia or tabut in the masjid, keep it there for some days and afterwards take it in procession through the village. Sai Baba allowed the keeping of the tabut for four days and on the fifth day got it removed from the masjid without the least compunction. If we say that he was a Muslim, his ears were pierced, that is, had holes according to the Hindu custom. If you think that he was a Hindu, he advocated the practice of circumcision. Though according to Mr. Nana Sahib Sandolkar, who observed him closely, he was not himself circumcised. Article in Sai Leela on Baba Hindu Ki Yavan by B. V. Dev, page 562. If you call him Hindu, he always lived in the masjid. If Muslim, he had always the dhuni, that is, the sacred fire there, and the following things which are contrary to Muslim religion, that is, grinding on the handmill, blowing of the conch and bells, oblation in the fire, bhajan, giving of food and worship of Baba's feet by means of aragya, that is water, were allowed there. If you think that he was a Muslim, the best of Brahmins and Agnihotris, leaving aside their orthodox ways, fell prostrate at his feet. Those who went to make enquiries about his caste were dumbfounded and captured by his darshan. So no one could definitely decide whether Sai Baba was a Hindu or a Muslim. This is no wonder for he who completely surrenders himself to the Lord by getting rid of his egoism and body consciousness thus becomes one with him and has nothing to do with any questions of caste or nationality. Baba saw no difference between any two castes and even between beings. He took meat and fish with fakirs but did not grumble when dogs touched the dishes with their mouths. Such a unique and a wonderful incarnation of Sai Baba. On account of the merits in my past birth, I had the good fortune to sit at his feet and enjoy his blessed company. The joy and delight I derived therefrom was incomparable. In fact, Sai Baba was pure Anand and consciousness. I cannot sufficiently describe him, his greatness and uniqueness. He who took delight at his feet was established in his own self. Many sannyasis, sadhaks and all sorts of men aspiring for salvation came to Sai Baba. He always walked, talked and laughed with them and always uttered, Allah Malik, God is the sole owner. He never liked discussions or disputations. He was always calm and controlled, though irritable at times, always preached Vedanta. And nobody knew till the last who was Baba. Princes and poor people were treated alike by him. He knew the innermost secrets of all and when he gave expression to them, all were surprised. He was the repository of all knowledge. Still, he fringed ignorance. He also disliked honour. Such was the characteristic of Sai Baba. Though he had a human body, his deeds testified to be Godhood. All people considered him as the God in Shirdi. Behaviour of Sai Baba Ignorant that I am, I cannot describe Baba's miracles. He got almost all the temples in Shirdi repaired. Through Tatya Patil, the temples of Shani, Ganpati, Shankar Parvati, village deity and Maruti were put in order. His charity was also remarkable. The money he used to collect as Dakshina was freely distributed. Rupees 20 to some, Rupees 15 or 50 to others, every day. The recipients thought that this was pure charity money and Baba wished 
that it should be usefully employed. People benefited immensely by having Baba's darshan. Some became hale and hearty. Wicked people were turned into good ones. Leprosy was cured in some cases. Many got their desires fulfilled without any medication put in the eyes. Some blind men got back their sight, and some lame ones got their limbs. Nobody could see the end of his extraordinary greatness. His fame spread far and wide, and pilgrims from all sides flocked to Shirdi. Baba had his asan near the dhuni and always rested there. He sat there in meditation, sometimes without a bath. He used to tie a small white turban on his head and wear a clean dhotar around his waist and a shirt on his body. This was his attire in the beginning. He first practiced medicine in the village. He examined patients and gave medicines. He was always successful and he became a famous hakim, doctor. A curious case may be narrated here. One devotee had his eyes quite red and swollen. No doctor was available in Shirdi at that time. The other devotees took him to Baba. In such cases, other doctors would use ointments, anjans, cow's milk and camphorated drugs etc. Baba's remedy was quite unique. He pounded some biba that is some carpus anacardium that is marking nuts and made two balls of them and thrust them on in each eye of the patient and wrapped a cloth bandage around them next day the bandage was removed and water was poured over them the inflammation subsided and the pupils became white and clear though the eyes are very delicate the biba caused no harm or hurt but removed the disease of the eyes many such cases were cured this is only one instance in this regard baba's yogic practices Baba knew all the processes and practices of yoga. Two of them will be described here. Dhauti Kriya or Cleansing Process Every third day, Baba went to the well near the banyan tree at a considerable distance from the masjid, washed his mouth and had a bath. On one occasion, he was seen throwing up his intestines, clean them inside out and place them on a jam tree for drying. There are people in Shirdi who have actually seen this and who have testified to this fact. Ordinary dhoti is done by a moistened piece of linen, 3 inches broad and 22 and a half feet long. This piece is gulped down the throat and allowed to remain in the stomach for about half an hour for being reacted there and then taken out. But Baba's dhoti was quite unique and extraordinary. Khanda Yoga In this practice Baba extracted his limbs from his body and left them separately at different places in the masjid once a gentleman went to the masjid and saw the limbs of baba lying in separate places he was terrified at first he thought of running to the village officer and informing them of baba being hacked to pieces and murdered he thought that perhaps he would be held responsible as he was the first informant and knew something of the affair so he kept silent but next day when he went to the masjid he was very much surprised to see baba hale and hearty as before he thought that what he had seen the previous day was only a dream baba practiced yoga since his infancy and nobody knew or guessed the proficiency that he had attained in it he charged no fees for his cures became renowned and famous by his virtue of his merits gave health to many a poor and suffering person This famous doctor of doctors cared not for his interests but always worked for the good and the welfare of others himself suffering unbearable and terrible pain many a time in the process one such instance i will relate now which will show the all pervasive and the most merciful character of sai baba baba's all pervasiveness and mercy in the year 1910 Baba was sitting near the dhuni on Diwali and warming himself. He was putting firewood into the dhuni which was burning brightly. A little later, instead of pushing logs of wood, Baba pushed his arm into the dhuni. His arm was scorched and burnt. This was noticed by the errand boy Madhav and also by Madhav Rao Deshpande, that Shama. They at once ran to Baba and Madhav Rao clasped Baba by his waist from behind and dragged him forcibly backwards. and asked deva why you have done this then baba came to his senses and replied the wife of a blacksmith at some distant place was working the bellows of a furnace 
Her husband called her, forgetting that her child was on her lap. She got up hastily, and the child slipped into the furnace. I immediately thrust my hand into the furnace and saved the child. I do not mind my arm being burnt, but I am glad that the life of the child is saved. Leper devotee service. On hearing the news of Baba's hand being burnt from Shama, that's Madhavrao Deshpande, Mr. Nana Sahib Chandolkar, accompanied by the famous doctor Parmanand of Mumbai, with his medical outfit consisting of ointments, lint and bandages etc., rushed to Shirdi and requested Baba to allow Dr. Parmanand to examine the arm and dress the wound caused by the burn. This was refused by Baba. Ever since the burnt arm was dressed by Bhagoji Shinde, a leper devotee, his treatment consisted in massaging the burnt part with ghee and then placing a leaf over it and bandaging it tightly. Mr. Nana Sahib Chandulkar solicited Baba many a time to unfasten the bandages, get the wound examined, dressed and treated by Dr. Parmanand with the object that it may heal fast. Dr. Parmanand himself made similar requests. But Baba postponed it by saying that Allah was his doctor and did now allow his arms to be examined. Dr. Parmanan's medicines were not exposed to the air of Shirdi and they remained intact, but he had the good fortune of getting a darshan of Baba. Bhagoji was allowed to treat the hand daily. After some days, the arm healed and all were happy. Still, we do not know whether any trace of pain was left or not. Every morning, Bhagoji went through the program of untying the bandages, massaging the arm with ghee and tightly bandaging it again. This went on till Sai Baba's Samadhi, that is death. Sai Baba, a perfect Siddh, as he was, did not really want this treatment. But out of love for his devotee, he allowed this Upasana, that is, service of Bhagoji to go on interrupted all along. When Baba started for Lady, Bhagoji held an umbrella over him and accompanied him. Every morning, when Baba sat near the post close to the dhuni, Bhagoji was present and started his service. Bhagoji was a sinner in his past birth. He was suffering from leprosy. His fingers were shrunk. His body was full of pus and smelling badly, though outwardly he seemed so unfortunate. But he really was very lucky and happy, for he was the premier servant of Baba and got the benefit of his company. Master Khapade's Plague Case I shall now relate another instance of Baba's wonderful Leela. Mrs. Khapade, the wife of Mr. Dada Saheb Khapade of Amravati, was staying at Shirdi with her young son for some days. One day, the son got high fever, which further developed into bubonic plague. The mother was frightened and felt most uneasy. She thought of leaving the place for Amravati and went near Baba in the evening. When he was coming near the Vada, now the Samadhi Mandir, in his evening rounds for asking his permission, she informed him in a trembling tone that her dear young son was down with plague. Baba spoke kindly and softly to her, saying that the sky is beset with clouds, but they will melt and pass off and everything will be smooth and clear. So saying, he lifted up his kafni up to the waist and showed to all present four fully developed bubons as big as eggs and added, See how I have to suffer for my devotees. Their difficulties are mine. Seeing this unique and extraordinary deed, that's Leela, the people were convinced as to how the saints suffer pains for the devotees. The hearts of saints is softer than wax. It is soft in and out as butter. They love their devotees without any idea of gain and regard them as their true relatives. Going to Pandarpur I shall now close this chapter after relating a story illustrating how Baba loved his devotees and anticipated their wishes and movements. Mr. Nana Sahib Sandulkar, who was a great devotee of Baba, was a Mamladdar at Nand Darbar in Khandesh. He got an order of transfer to Pandarpur. His devotion to Sai Baba bore fruit as he got an order to go and stay at Pandharpur, which is regarded as the Bhuve Kuntha, that is, heaven on the earth. Nana Sahib had to take immediate charge, so he left for the place without even waiting or informing anybody at Shirdi. He wanted to give a surprise visit at Shirdi. 
his Pandarpur. See and salute his Vithoba, that's Baba, and then proceed further. Nobody knew of Nana Sahib's departure for Shirdi, but Sai Baba knew all about this, as his eyes were everywhere. As soon as Nana Sahib approached Nimgao, a few miles from Shirdi, there was a stir in the masjid at Shirdi. Baba was sitting and talking with Mahalsapati, Appa Shinde and Kashiram. When he at once said, Let us all four do some bhajan. The doors of Pandari are open. Let us sing merrily. Then they began to sing in chorus. The bhav of the song being, I have to go to Pandarpur. I have to stay on there, for it is the house of my Lord. Baba sang and the devotees followed him. After a short while, Nana Sahib came there with his family, prostrated before Baba and requested him to accompany them to Pandarpur and stay with them. The solicitation was not necessary, as the devotee told Nana Sahib that Baba was already in the mood of going to Pandarpur and staying there. Hearing this, Nana Sahib was moved and fell at Baba's feet. Then after getting Baba's permission, Udi and blessings, Nana Sahib left for Pandarpur. There is no end to Baba's stories, but let us now stop here, reserving for the next chapter other topics such as importance of human life, Baba's living on arms, Baizabai's service and other stories. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace to all. Om Sai Ram.